Hello and a very warm welcome and a little glimpse as you can probably see that RJ is in TAME and the last time we were in TAME together we were doing a bit of Tokai testing weren't we a little Tokai tasting in TAME as we used to call it and we had the wonderful glorious Hungarians came down with gallons and gallons of Tokai and it was like nectar some of it wasn't it? God um yeah it's it's like liquid gold isn't it it's uh it was something that was only um enjoyed by Habsburg and Merovingian monarchs and now um of course you know it's 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 available to the wider public but it's still not available to not everyone can afford to enjoy it so we've uh this is what we're doing at KCT we're we're, we're making you know this six petonios really really um uh, you know, rare and 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 not only not only rare, but but from some of the best winemakers who are almost like geologists because they they grow these amazing um, wines in the volcanic hills in in the Tokai region, and it's just you know making it available for everybody, which is fantastic. And, and that's what I love. We, we talk about it being the wine of kings and the king of wines, didn't we? And uh, right. and Queen Victoria used to get sent some of this wine, uh, this Tokai, and it is sensational. And what I love is that we've been picking, uh, with our friends at the Best of Hungary, we've been picking an exclusive KTT Legacy range, which is all gonna be available via the website. Uh, people can order it in the run up to Christmas. You can practice, rehearse your Christmas dinner, and you can also get, uh, we're looking at maybe creating a special package. We're gonna get a bit of the uh, foie gras in there for those who want to do that, or a bit of the other little treats, as well as the Tokai. What were some of your favorite bits of that? Of what, sorry? Of the Tokai and, and, the, and the little extra bits that they had. Um, yeah, no, I mean, they, they had some, uh, it's a wonderful, uh, truffle, uh, I mean, because uh, not a lot of people know about the, um, the amount of truffles that can be found in, in Hungary and, and also in Poland. And, um, it's just not being exploited the way it should be because it's, it, um, but there, there are so many trees that, uh, have these gems waiting underneath them. And uh, in Hungary, uh, they've, they've started to step up. The, um, uh, the the sale the picking and selling of truffles so it's it's amazing the the, the honeys the jams the spreads so oh, it was heaven so it's Very really nice. good so we're, we're creating some special packages some maybe some special hampers for Christmas so people should absolutely mm -hmm. they haven't done so already go over to kttlegacy.com uh, we're feeding all sorts of products into there as well but it always amazes me I love truffles I love truffles on eggs I love the smell of truffle but what always fascinates me is who was the first person who actually dug up something from the ground and decided I might <laughs> eat this you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> I know. well the, the the Romans saw it as a uh, uh, a gift from 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 Zeus. It was a uh, it, it was considered um, a gift from the lightning god because, of course, whenever you uh, found the truffles, it was always under a tree, or a lot of the times it was under a tree that uh, had been struck by lightning because, of course, that makes the soil very rich in nitro uh, nitrogen. So um, that's where they love to grow. So the the Romans coveted it and kept it as well away from from everyone except for the Julii and the and the um, uh, the the um, patricians, you know, the ple plebeians, so the the people who weren't the the, the no so called nobles were not allowed to to have truffles. Um, so it could be on the pain of of death. Yeah. Yeah. And they were lucky because, as you say, when the tree they could see the truffles, but later on they had to engage the services of pigs. Uh, who would go right. truffle yeah. hunting? <laughs> Only problem with a pig, though, is they uh, when they nose it up, they'll they'll eat it. So <laughs> you, know, you have to be careful. There's no point <laughs> being a pig if you've got to give your truffles away. <laughs> I get that. So they, train, <laughs> they train dogs now. That, um, oh, I know, which, which is fantastic. So so they they, they were out that, 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 and dogs are absolutely superb and their sense of smell. So a friend a friend of ours runs this whole thing uh, about training dogs and how they can sniff out all sorts of things from cash to diseases to various other things obviously mm. to um to, to little rare newts and stuff like that because the dog yeah, yeah. No, they're using them for cancer diagnosis yeah exactly yeah. 
So it's so a really interesting, a, a shout out to Colin Singer, who, who has a wonderful company who deals with that sort of side. Um, but no fascinating stuff. So on KGTlegacy.com, people can start to get their orders in already. I know it's uh, lots of exciting stuff. We're going to chat a little bit further in the next episode about what else people can find there. But just give us a summary of the highlights that people can expect on that wonderful range of the Tokai tasting, which we did in Tame. Well, there's the, um, I, I recommend the Balassa, anything from Balassa. He's uh, one of the best um, uh, wine growers. As I was saying earlier, he's, he's more like a geologist than a, than a wine grower. He knows uh, the volcanic soil like the back of his hand. And it's such, it's such a beautiful array of, um, like he'll, he'll grow things that are a hundred meters apart that are completely of the same grape variety, but have a completely different taste because of the soil. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, Balassa. We, we, we did that, didn't we? When we had uh, our friends mm -hmm. down and Gabor came down and gave us all those different ones. And we could, we could taste, we had two different bottles, just a few yards apart, but the taste was so different, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it's, it's remarkable. And uh, yeah, yeah the, um, that and also the, the six Petonius uh, one were, um, which is like kind of our flagship um, product that, um, I also highly recommend, and the Samorodny, which is oh. uh, comes from a, 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 a it's a, it's um, a Polish word, an old Polish word that um, talks about the harvest. But it's it's um, now uh, a, a wine, a sweet wine that's also made via the noble rot, um, which is the, the way they make Sotern and and uh, and Tokai. Uh, so this noble rot, then it, you know, it, it becomes. Um, uh, the, the sweet wines we enjoy, but summer Rodney is a, is a bit different. It's a bit stronger. So if you want like a bit more of a kick, um, go for that. Yeah. But okay. the main thing is that all of these things are, these hampers are more affordable, you know, than what and you that, find on the market. I mean, the entry point level, the price points are so reasonable because you manage to negotiate directly with the relevant people to bring that. Yes. I always like the summer Rodney because it reminds me of my brother. My brother's called Rodney and he was born yes. in the summer. So <laughs> July the 13th, it was all always exciting stuff, which is great. So do get along if you haven't done so already. Go along to kttlegacy.com and all sorts of treasures await for you there. But for now, RJ, thank you very much for joining me. Always a pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.